Oi, Range Rover Sport. We are going to talk all today about height. Now, someone used to say to me, I'll tell you about Uncle Bill, Tyler. Uncle Bill, I used to say it's height. He said, no, it's height, th, with a th at the end. And I said, how, how, how's that work, Uncle Bill? He said, well, it's length, width, and height. But couldn't convince him otherwise. Right, we are talking about height today. Ride height. How much up and down we are going to do. Young Gary that works for us. I'll put a picture of his car in. I'll put it in now. He has got all air suspension on his car and he's got it all lowered down. Um, yeah, and he's cool. And right. Now, obviously, the Range Rover Sport has air suspension, which means we can play tricks with it, which is cool. Now, air suspension is really good because the air, obviously, air compresses, which a liquid won't. Air compresses and it gives you a good ride. And you can also raise it up, which is brilliant for going off-road. And we've done all that. We haven't done it in this one. Um, you can go off-road, give you good ground clearance. And you also have access mode, which lowers it down, which makes it easier to get in and out of the car. But every height is a compromise. And I was talking with Tyler about this. And we talked about the center of gravity. So as you lower your center of gravity, as you're cornering, the, your tire force is at the ground level and your center of gravity acts. And, and it creates this sort of tipping motion. Now, if you reduce your center of gravity by moving all your weight down or taking weight out the higher half or by lowering your suspension, you lower your center of gravity and it does give you improved cornering ability. But it does also have some side effects. Like if you're driving along a bumpy road, you can start grinding out and if you go over a bump, your exhaust starts rubbing and stuff. So height is a compromise. It's just one of those things, there's no perfect height. And obviously Land Rover, you've got the three modes. So you've got access mode, which is low, which is good for getting in and out the cars. Also good for when you go into a multi-story car park or there's a height restriction or your garage or something, then it's also good when you're working on the roof. I mean, we often change the height of the car just depending what we're working on, don't we, Tyler? If we're installing a roof rack, we'll put it down to access mode, or if we're doing something underneath, we'll often put it up just to give us more clearance. So height adjustment is cool, and it is a compromise. So you kids out there, you wanna change the height of your Range Rover Sport, that's why you're watching this video. So there are a couple of ways of doing it. One way that's used a lot, there are these little suspension linkages, and I'll steal a picture off the internet somewhere, and basically, you have an, an arm that senses what height you're at and you have one in every corner of your car and as you go over a bump it's going up and down and as your mother-in-law sits in the back and it goes down like that it tells you all these things and one other thing that's really cool with their suspension is you can actually level your car so when your mother-in-law or someone else's mother-in-law gets in the back of your car your car goes like this it can adjust that and it gives more pressure to the back spring so your headlights are level so Headlight leveling is one really good thing that by body leveling, you, your headlights are level. So that's really good. Right, where was I? So if you change, they've got little drop links. They've got these little arms that go like this and there's a little sort of encoder here. And it's got a little drop link that goes to the suspension. Now, if you put different height drop links on all around, then basically the, suspen the sensors are lying because it's going, whoa, it's up here. So it tells it to lower it. So by changing the length of those rods, and you can buy different length rod kits, you trick your car into, it basically lies as to where the suspension is. And so bear in mind that you've got these three modes, and we started to write these three modes, and we're gonna take some measurements and do some data. You've got off-road mode, which is up. You've got normal road. Now bear in mind, the car will itself revert you to normal mode. If you drive too fast, it says, right, you're clearly not off-roading at 70 miles an hour. Psh, you're going down to normal height. And likewise, it can say, well, you, you're not driving in a multi-story car park at 50 miles an hour. I'm going to take you. It gives you a warning first and says, look, either you slow down or I'm going to raise the suspension. So you, you always end up driving in normal mode. But back to the suspension rods. So you've got three modes and I'm going to represent them with my fingers. This being off-road mode, this being normal mode, and this being access height. Now, if you trick your rods, they're either all going to move down or all going to move up. The difference between them will remain the same. You're only moving the three. Because some people say, how could I get the off-road mode higher and the access mode lower so I could cruise and spread them out? 
I don't know of a way of doing that, right? Unless you can really hack the software. So we talked about ROD. The other way and the way we're going to do today is we are going to use the IID tool. And the IID tool recalibrates or puts a false calibration into the system to basically make it lie. But you'll have the same effect. So you've got your three modes. It's just going to move them up or move them down or put them back to default. And you'll see how we do that in a minute. But the cool thing is with the IID tool is you can set up multiple lies, right? So you can lie and it will go high and you can call that beast mode. We're going to call it beast mode so it sits up high, right? And then at the touch of a button, you could make it tell a lie that it was a low rider. So we're going to set low rider mode. But bear in mind, it will move all three up by the same lie. The same lie applies to all three modes, right? Hopefully that's clear. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a sort of scientific experiment here. We are going to measure with a ruler, tape measure even. We are going to measure the car. So Tyler has taken it out for a drive so that sometimes overnight you might lose a bit of air pressure or something. We have taken it out for a drive, slipped it back into the workshop, and we are going to measure the height to this little marked area here off our flat level workshop floor, which we are blessed with. It is flat and level. What's the scores on the doors, Tyler? 81. 81. So now bear in mind, when you park your car, it does by default go into access mode. So the default settings here is going to be 81 or 810. We could do millimeters, Tyler. So we have made this table on the car. I will take a picture of it if it doesn't come out well on the video camera. It's much better on the Defender. Having a <laughs> next car we buy, Ty, we must keep buying white cars. It's so much better to write on. Although I'm not really think we're supposed to, but anyway. Right, so we are gonna do that. We are gonna put it in normal height now. Tyler's gonna jump in the car, and then we are gonna put it in off-road height, and we are gonna measure all of those. So we've got all the dimensions recorded. Then, the bit you're all waiting for, and going fast forward, shh, um, we are gonna show you how to change the height. Right. Let's do it. Can you rest the camera there, Tyler? That's access, default. Mm. Okay. Right, so I've just done the back. We're at 800 on the back. So Tyler, if you want to jump in the car, he's camera shy, he's got him on the back of the camera. Right, no. Right, we are going to put the car now. We haven't got the bonnet closed, Tyler. I might need to disconnect the bonnet. If you're adjusting your height, often it does like your bonnet closed. So we'll disconnect our charger. Right, so the scores on the doors are 850. So there we go, normal height. 850. Go around the back. Boom, boom, boom. We have got, interestingly, 850 as well. There we go. Normal. Right, Tyler. Up she goes, Tyler. Okay. Maybe just give it a little ever so short backwards and forwards just to release the brakes. Yeah, that's adjusted it a little bit. Go, go back a bit. That's it, and forward a little bit. Yeah, back in park. Yeah, so the brakes at the back there, they wear the they're locked the wheel can't rotate so it does have an effect on it right we like to do it right 91 Tyler 910 and then well you can probably knock it off there Tyler there you go let's have as much as we like the V8 and that is as well 910 so right if you grab the camera so we've got a set of readings here now so let's do a quick, so we've got quick mass, Tyler, 40 going from there. So we've got a 40 millimeter difference there and 60 millimeters there. And it's, it's much the same at the back. The only, these two are both the same. This one was a little different, but we've got a 50 and a 60 there. So, right, so we are now gonna play with the IID tool. So we're gonna jump in the car, plug our little IID tool dongle in, and we are gonna see how low we can get this beast to go. Right, so this is the IID tool. It's a Bluetooth box of trickery that goes into the ODB2 port on your Ranger Sport, which is 
down in your foot well if you're left hand drive it will be in the same sort of position but obviously on the left all right you got that in the lights on tyler they when you plug it in that way you can't see the lights there's needed lights on both sides right so we think we're in all right and then you open the tool you might need the ignition on tyler so you open an app on your phone it comes up with this screen here i think we got it yeah we got it there good tyler yeah right and then the, what you want to go for is the height adjust one that's near the top there and it brings up this screen here so what you've got is you've got default so you can always go back and what you can do is you can set three one button settings so you just literally have to open that and you can select and you can call them at the moment they're called setting one two and three we're going to call it we're going to call it low rider and beast low rider is going to go pretty much as low as we can and beast is going to be pretty much as high as we can so let's go so you have to press and hold the button that says setting one. Oh, that was quick, wasn't it? Um, and then it says, right, so, oh, edit value. Sorry, naming it. Oh, sorry, his name in it. Edit value, sorry. Uh -uh. Lowrider. Lowrider. Right then. Okay, so now we can edit. The, so there's a, yep, so there you go. So if you press down that, and now this this little chain in the middle is to represent the fact that the two are linked now you can unbreak the link and you can make your you can change the front rear independent of the rear which you may or may not want to do but we're gonna what are we gonna do i would link them together for now tyler see if you yeah, don't get too weird i don't know too too off piece they eh? right can you un oh you got to get them yeah then you can rejoin them right now right, go on then how low can we go 14 18 oh. 21 oh it didn't go lower oh well, hold on. i'm getting scared now tyler oh let's go minus 30 i'm i'm bottling it i've done i've driven through that wade in the defender that was my that's my risky poop for this year gone right 30. right so let's save it so we are going minus 30 low rider and while we're here let's just set the other one i'm keeping up this time tyler so rename it beast, beast. Right, and we might use this when we go off road if we want to go super all right and how high are we going to go should we go plus 30 as well shall we yeah. and we can also try and guess what the, the units actually are yes or what they equate to in terms of millimeters yeah, yeah. and you're going it's still going it's sort of dodgy button it has this little moment there go. Oh. oh anyway that's that's all right we'll go with that though we're right so we've got to remember when we write the back We'll have to write beast in brackets plus 26 and the front is plus 30. Um, just screenshot that again for us, Tyler, and we'll input that in the video so we look professional. Right, and then I guess the trick is to save that. And then, there, there we go. Right, so at the moment, we're still in default. I don't know how you know which one you're currently in. Ah, the, it goes green, okay? Well, the so green is a selected one. Is the selected one. Ah, ah, then you have to put program, yeah. do you? Right, so, you, so, so we've selected low rider. Hit program, apply changes to vehicle, executing Racine, operation failed. Oh, yeah, maybe start it up, Tyler, give it some battery voltage. Any excuse to start the V8. Change, here we go, updating, yeah. yeah. So you might need, it. there you go, it's quick. Now, obviously, if you're messing with the IID tool, sometimes you do need to have it on battery charge because you're, if you're changing the CCF files. But this one, you're not changing the CCF files. You're just updating the calibration value. So it's quite a quick, easy thing. Right, so we've got the low. So how do we know which one we're actually on? No, because it's ah. kind of, if I select default, it's kind of default zero and that we're currently on minus 30. 30 from default, yes. Okay, that's cool. Right, it'd be good if they sort of underlined it for the one, but right, we'll gloss over that. Right, so we are all programmed. So um, what should we do? Should we set it to low ride first? Yeah, the government wants to see what it looks like low, Tyler. So start <laughs> it up. Let's show us how you adjust the suspension because not everyone's got one of these flash Range Rovers. Yeah. Right, so that signifies it's at normal height. And then press it again. Oh, there we go. Press it again. And it should go to low. You might need to, or what's it telling us on the dash? Release the brake. Suspension in it, it, it thinks it's hit something. It might have, right, it might have thought it was gonna go down or it's, it might be out of its range. Just 
just put it in put it in drive keep your foot on the brake timer whoa I'm going this right yeah keep on the right now now just try again now just in case the brakes were were stopping it from and it, it'll say there on the screen access height selected ah so it looks like it's tried to go down and and it's hit something and it's bounced it back up extended mode is what it does if it gets low and hits a rock or something it goes whoa and so let me just get out again Tyler try that again and let's see maybe minus 30 is too much Whoa, it has gone low, Tyler. I think it might have gone a bit lower than it likes. Um, that's getting quite low at the back now. Right, so what mode is it saying it's in now? Oh, it's just in a tizzy now. Yeah. Go up to normal height. Well, why don't we measure it in normal height on low rider? Right, so we are now gonna measure it again. So it should be as you can see, it's sitting lower on, but this is normal height. So get your ruler out there. Right, we have been playing around for a couple of hours now. And what we've decided to do is rather than write it on the wing, we have decided to take a series of measurements, front and back, obviously on the other side, at offsets minus 20, minus 10, zero, plus 10, plus 20, etc. And we're gonna put that up on the computer. We'll put some screenshots up. But one thing I wanted to show you was on the app, there is a cool screen, which is called dial up height control. And again, if you look at that, um, what you can see is the actual readings at the sides. On the spreadsheet, we will show you what these live readings, which are the actual readings, and our offset and we've done a little table but this is quite a cool way you can actually control it here but it's only the same as controlling the switches in the middle of the dash isn't it Tyler yeah. so yeah so but it allows you to do that I don't know why you'd want to do it rather than those switches but the key thing is you can see every time we change the height to take a reading we could see whether it was settled there's no other way of seeing exactly you could see these values going up and then staying fixed so that's what we've done. We'll put the data up. What do we conclude, Tyler? So pretty much, I think if you go to minus 20, that seems to be, if you go a lot lower than a minus 20 offset, it starts to get a bit upset. Now, one thing we did learn, Tyler, was yeah. that if you are going low, do not do it with your brakes on. Because as it lowers, just the way the trailing arms are, the brakes actually stop it lowering and it put it into extended suspension mode. It, it thought it had hit something. So in the end, we were putting it in neutral, weren't we? Yeah. So when we were just in height, we were putting it in neutral so the brakes weren't on, the park brake wasn't on. And that seemed to be better. Um, I think if you go any more offset than minus 20 on the IRD tool, you will start to run close to bottoming out. But we'll put the data up. What are we going to... So we have got low rider programmed on there, Tyler. Now, one big thing. We've been talking a lot, haven't we, Tyler? Here, you can film me, Tyler. Right, suspension, it's quite, I've never, I mean, I think a lot about a lot of things as you probably worked out, but I'd never really thought that deep about air suspension. But I was thinking, when you put your suspension up and it got, we got it into a bit of a weird position once, didn't it? I think we over-egged it and the front kept going up. We like to stop and I was, I was getting worried because as you get higher, you're putting more and more air pressure into those air springs. And I was like, whoa, this is getting dodgy. The pressure in them must be getting higher and higher, which obviously it does. And I was thinking, well, if the pressure's getting higher, when you have an air spring, which is a balloon effectively, the, the higher the pressure in the, in the balloon, in the air spring, the less springy, the less soft it becomes. As you know, if you have a, a, a balloon and you only half blow it up, it's quite, it's quite squidgy. Now, if you think about that in terms of air suspension, when you're going off-road, you want the suspension up. When you get the suspension up, the pressure in the springs rises. If the pressure in the springs is higher, you'll, you'll get a stiffer ride, which you don't really want when you're off-road. You really want it a little bit softer, or at least the same. You don't want it stiffer. And then the contrary also applies. When you lower your car down, because you're cruising around, around KFC car park, um, you want to, and you've only got this much ground clearance, like on Gary's car, you want the suspension to be quite stiff. You don't want to go over the speed bumps and it go boom, boom, because then you'll be grounding out. So 
I, it seems that that is one limitation of air suspension is that for a Land Rover anyway, when it's up, you want it soft and when it's down, you probably want it a bit harder. Um, anyway, I'm sure there's guys out there that know way loads more about air suspension than me. Is that a big limitation of air suspension? Um, discuss. Right, have we covered all the things we've discovered in our day playing with air suspension, Tyler? Uh, it's getting stiffer. It's, get, it's getting stiffer. <laughs> it's getting stiffer. Yeah, I mean, we, at one point I was rocking on the car and trying to assess... Uh, the crystals. Oh, the, yeah. The that is a good point, Tyler. So, oh, it's getting slower, not stiffer. <laughs> yeah, so as we've been playing with it all day, it's getting more and more grumpy with us. We've been saying, go up, go down, and it started to go, whoa, up again. And it started to get quite slow. So I did say to Tyler, we'll have a look on topics, the workshop manual, and we'll see if there is a desiccant crystal canister that we can change. Maybe there are some serviceable parts on the air suspension. So as ever, our journey, our journey leads from one thing to another. So there we go. That is enough for today on air suspension. Um, IID tool is a good way and those rods are another good way, but think about what you're doing, why you want to do it. Um, we are going to lower it minus 20 in that low rider mode. Um, and then we've just got to look at wheel spaces because one another thing to look at is obviously I don't th on the Range Rover your your wheels and tires will go up inside the arch. Now if we space the wheels out, then we're going to have to be careful with that, aren't we, Tyler? Yeah. So I'm going to get some 20 millimeter wheel spaces um, and put those on. We'll have a look at those, and then I might have to change the suspension heights in combination with my wheel spaces. God, this being a boy racer is hard work. It's frying my brain, Tyler. Anyway, good luck. Have fun.